In this exercise, we'll use Nuke to create a simple bouncing ball. Uh, we'll start by creating a, a simple motion path, then we'll move on and use different interpolation methods to add some speed changes to simulate the physics that you would normally ex expect from this kind of animation, such as acceleration and deceleration. So if we look at this script, we've got a uh, we've got two two elements in it. We've essentially got a, a background image and we've got a uh, a football graphic. Uh, the they've been merged together, and we have a transform node applied to the ball, which we're going to use to create the basic animation. So the first thing we need to do is we need to access the transform gizmo. To do that, we just need to click on the uh, or double click the transform node, and we can see now that we've got the gizmo over the ball. And this allows us to easily move the ball around. It allows us to perform another of, of, a variety of other tasks as well, such as rotating, uh, skewing, uh, scaling on the uh, on the, on the vertical axis and on the horizontal axis, or scaling uniformly, or just using this uh, just by moving inside the ball, we're able to move it around. So onto this motion path then, we're going to start by making sure that we're on the very first frame and we need to enable a keyframe on this frame. So to do that, uh, we're just going to use the translate to uh, the, the position changes. So what we need to do is we need to click on this little icon here, the animation menu, and choose set key. And a couple of things happen here. First of all, on the timeline we can see this little blue triangle. That denotes that there is a keyframe on, uh, on this particular frame, but it doesn't particularly specify on what property that keyframe is on. This is much more revealing in terms of the, um, in, in terms of the property that's animated. Uh, you can see that the, uh, the, the, the parameter values have gone bright blue. Uh, that denotes that keyframes are enabled on this particular property and that a keyframe exists on this particular frame. Just to show you what happens if we just move forward by a few frames, you can see that these are still blue but they've, they've become dimmer. And what that should tell us is that the property contains keyframes, but there isn't a keyframe on this very specific frame, which is in this case frame 10. So let's move on and create this animation then. So we'll move the, the player down to about frame 18. And we'll bring the ball up to round about this kind of position. Then we'll move on a little bit further, maybe somewhere around about 34, and we'll bring it back down. We can refine this later, but for now we just want to get a basic motion path. And you can see that as we're doing this, Nuke is actually drawing a motion path into place for us. So I'll move forward a bit further, maybe to about 48, and then bring it back up again. I'll actually not take it up quite as far this time. Um, and what I'll tr what I'll try and do is create the impression that the ball is actually losing momentum and the therefore bouncing not quite as high each time. So I'll come forward again, frame 60 in this particular case, back down to the ground. I'm also trying to shorten the spaces between the keyframes as I'm going along. Be about there. And hopefully you get the gist of how this works. We'll just do a couple more. Okay, we'll leave it at that. We will make a little bit of refinement on this uh, shortly. But if I just move over the timeline, uh, sorry, over the uh, over the viewing area, and just hit O, you can see that that actually turns the uh, the, the overlays off. If we, we hit O again, you can see that the overlay is on with the gizmo showing and the motion path. So sometimes it's important to be able to enable and disable these. So just type O while you're hovering over the viewing area. You can see there the gizmo is accessible, but the, uh, but the actual animation path itself has been turned off. So they're the three options that are available to us in terms of the overlays when we've actually got keyframes. So let's play this now and uh, and see and see what we have. Okay. 
Okay, so we can see the we can see the motion path, but we can see that it's far from realistic. It doesn't have any of the real world physics that we would expect to see in this particular sequence. Before we get into retiming the animation though by changing the interpolation methods, I just want to open up the dope sheet and, and show you this. Um, the dope sheet shows us our keyframes um, and this is a great tool for multiple selections of, uh, of keyframes. So say for example I want to uh, I want to just space these these keyframes out a little bit more then I can just select and just marquee select them. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to try and just space these out a little bit a little bit better than they they were uh, just to try and try and create this the slowing down effect of the of the ball um, that maybe needs to go forward a couple of keyframes so I'm just trying to grade this a little bit so that it's the, there is a, a sort of a, a feeling of slowing down that's maybe a little bit slow there let me take those two and move those forward so round about there maybe we'll see a little bit of difference although it is difficult when uh, when the ball's sort of hovering in this in this way it's difficult to get a real feel but that gives us an idea of what we can do with regards to the the if you like the step changes between the keyframes so let's look at how we can improve the interpolation of the ball and by interpolation essentially what I what I mean what, nu what Nuke's doing here, we're, we've basically set keyframes at various points along the way um, and a keyframe is a point in time um, and in, on each of these keyframes we've actually changed the properties of the ball in this case just the position properties and what Nuke's doing is it's filling in the spaces in between and that process is, is called interpolation uh, Nuke uses what's called a smooth interpolation by default um, and we can see this if we look at the curve editor I'll just choose the the Y position translation and we can see that this is there's a curve in this line and uh, and, we, and that's quite revealing in terms of uh, in, in terms of how this animation takes place um, essentially the way that the curve works is that the steeper the line the faster the animation so what we're seeing here is that the animation starting at a reasonable speed and then slowing down as it comes into this keyframe and then as it comes over the over the peak of this keyframe and, and, we, and we start to go out of the keyframe at the other side it starts to, it, it's, it starts off slow then it starts to speed up until it gets to the bottom and then as it gets to the bottom it starts to slow down until it gets to the bottom then it starts off slow and speeds up and then slows down again at, towards the peak of the second uh, bounce so this is essentially how it's how it's happening so this is how we can see that there's some smoothing being applied at the at the keyframes now this is going to be okay for the high parts of the bounce these parts because this is exactly what we would expect in a ball we'd expect the ball as it lost as it loses momentum as it comes to the top of its bounce arc we'd expect it to be slowing down and then change direction as it comes back down what we wouldn't expect to see is a slowing down as it comes towards the ground we would expect it to hit the ground at maximum speed and then we'd expect it to leave the ground at maximum speed before slowing down as it comes to the top of its arc so we can leave the these these higher keyframes alone but we certainly need to make a change to these lower keyframes we need this we need this rather than this being a sort of a, a u shape we need it to be much more of a v and much more of a hard v we need it to be moving slowly out of it and then speeding up as it comes into the bounce and then and then quickly out of the bounce before slowing down as it comes to the top of the second arc so we're going to look at how we can do that but before we do let's just take a little look at the x axis essentially when we created the set keys um, Nuke has applied keys on both the X and the Y axis so because the uh, because the balls bouncing primar the, primarily the movement is in the is in the X is in the Y axis the, 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 the vertical movement but it has obviously created keyframes on, on on the X axis as well now we would want this to be pretty much a smooth left to right so we need the keyframe on the very first frame and we need the keyframe on the very last frame but I don't think we need these keyframes in between so we'll delete these we can do it in a couple of ways we can we can just dra drag a marquee around them all and select them in that way or we could do that we could do the same thing from the dope sheet we could just get the the X keyframes obviously we don't want the first one or the last one 
we just want the ones in between and then just hit the delete key and they've now gone so if we go back to the curve editor you can see now we've got a straight line so if we select both of those now and we just scrub through you can see there that we've got a much smoother horizontal movement of that ball but we've still maintained our bounce okay so that's just an aside let's focus now on the interpolation method that's going to allow us to improve this part of the bounce so what we can do to change the interpolation method is if we select the keyframe in the curve editor and we right click on that and we can come in down to interpolation and we can choose the interpolation type as I said by default Nuke applies the smooth animation which is a, a, an easing an easing in and an easing out prior to and, and, and leaving the keyframe what we want to do is want to break that so we're going to choose the break option and that's going to allow us to get out of the Bezier handle let's just move in a little bit to this so we can we can see it I'm just zooming in with my middle mouse button and I'm using I'm using the alt key just to bring that up if we just move o move our mouse over until it changes to a crosshair you can see now that we can actually pull this upwards and create the, the opposite arc that we had before and the same on the other side of the curve so essentially what we've got now is we is we've got this we've got this kind of inverted V effect so essentially what's happening now is the ball starts off slow at the top of the arc and then accelerates into the bounce hits the fl hits the ground changes direction but maintains that speed as it comes out until it gets to the top of the arc when it slows down again so what we're seeing now is more of a more of a realistic bounce movement as it hits the ground we can see that we'll see it better when we actually when we actually run this um, with the with with the play but before we do that let's just go through and make the changes to the other parts of the of the bounce so I'll just bring that down so it's kind of matching in terms of the in terms of the the bottom of the the bottom of the arc and again interpolation break and then move over until we get a crosshair pull it up same on this side so the left side is essentially the movement coming into the keyframe and the right side is the movement coming out of the keyframe so again we'll just pull this one down get it roughly in the same position break the interpolation and then redesign the animation curve by changing the curve with the Bezier handles okay we'll just pull this last one down so that they're all some something like similar in terms of their in terms of their position I'll just move that up a little bit okay so you can see now what we've got is, is is a curve which actually resembles in some way what we would expect to see with a ball bounce and let's let's actually play it and see what happens so much more realistic in terms of a, in terms of a ball bounce so reviewing this allows us to take a look at the at the bounce what we'd be looking for at this stage is looking for areas where it's maybe a little bit slow I think maybe it's a little bit slow on the first bounce there it seems to spend a little bit ta too much time in the air so what we could maybe do is just revisit our dope sheet maybe just shorten the gap there between the, f the first keyframes and the, and the next ones just by dragging over I'll just make sure that I've uh, that I've got all the keyframes there before I do that just drag them all across a little bit um, and I'm looking for areas where I can maybe shorten it a little bit but I think that's maybe okay so we're just sh trying to shorten the space in between the in between the first and the second keyframe I'm not. I'm really not trying to be too precise here. I'm just trying to give you a feel for how how the uh, how the tools work. So just want, we'll just do one last thing, just to reinforce the process. We'll just create a sort of a forward rotation to this ball. Just give us the opportunity to apply another uh, an, another parameter. So again, I'll just set the value of this uh, to say um, minus three sixty. I'll just create one full rotation, and then I'll set a key and I'll move across the timeline to uh, to frame 100 
and set that to positive 360. So essentially it's two, two rotations. So if we just take a look at that, I've got it completely the wrong way around. So I'll just uh, I'll just flip that round. So 360 on that side and minus 360 on that. So it's very simple to change the values. And if we look now, then we've got that movement. Uh, I think that's actually rotating a little bit too much. So what I'll do is I'll just set the I'll just set the the value on the final keyframe to zero. So essentially we've got one full rotation now through the cycle. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, so there we are. We've got ourselves a very basic ball bounce. It still needs to take on a lot more of the animation principles, uh, maybe some squash and stretch as it hits the ground. Maybe we'd expect it to squash a little bit. These are things that we could do using exactly the same techniques as we've applied in this particular uh, exercise. But in terms of, uh, of getting used to the basic uh, animation tools, then I think we've gone far enough for now, so we'll leave it at that. I hope you found the exercise useful.